Hi guys, this is Shalini and I am back to you with another video. Today it is going to be a very short discussion on types, degree and assessment of burns. So if you like the video and the content, kindly do like, share and subscribe. Also let me know your valuable comments in the comment box. Let's get started. So the definition of burns as you see here is defined as an injury to the skin or other organic tissue primarily caused by thermal trauma. So thermal trauma comes across as the most commonest cause of burns injury but there are other mechanisms of injury which we will see in the slides to come. So the other mechanism of injury is apart from thermal burn it is chemical, electrical, friction, radiation and freezing temperatures and to explain it in a more simpler way I have some pictures for you. Thermal burns again uh, there are two types of thermal burns one is flame injury and another one is scald injury the first one that we see here is flame injury in flame injury what happens is the victim directly comes in contact with fire in case of a gas cylinder uh, blast or in case of a firecracker injury on the other hand scald injury is where the victim comes in contact with a liquid uh, or a gaseous substance which is hot in nature is when we called as scald injury this panel shows about electrical injury or what we call as electrocution. Electrocution is when electric electricity comes in contact with your body and it travels through your body and then on an eventual stage might damage your tissues, organs and even bones and it's got an entry point, it's got an exit point. So that is electrical injury. Next one is chemical burns where the victim comes in contact with any kind of a strong acid or a strong base leading to an injury. So that is chemical burns the next one in line is radiation injury or radiation burns but we say and this is because of exposure to ultraviolet rays or ionizing radiation or in layman terms what we call as sunburns frostbite again it is not a very common type of injury but still it occurs in areas where we have freezing temperatures or also as an occupational hazard where people have to work in areas where you have freezing temperatures so that is frostbite so before we move on to the degree of burns, it is very imperative for us to understand what is the classification of skin. So this is a very simple picture where you can understand the classification of skin. At the same time, understand the degree of burns. So the first one, the first layer that you see here is called as the epidermis. The layer beneath it is called as the derma or the dermis. And then you have the subcutaneous tissue. So if it is first degree burn, then it is the epidermis that is affected or the epidermis that is injured. In case of second degree burn, it is the dermis that is affected. So dermis again has got two layers. The first layer is called as papillary dermis that is the upper one third. And then the second layer that is the lower two third, it is called as reticular dermis. So if it is second degree superficial burns, then we say it is the papillary dermis mostly being affected. And if it is second degree deep burns, then we understand that the whole of the dermis with the epidermis is affected. Now let's talk about third degree burns. Third degree burns is when the fat tissue is affected. Fourth degree burns on the contrary is when beyond the skin and the fat tissue, the muscle, the bones, the ligaments and other tissue and organs is affected is when we say it is fourth degree burn. Another classification that is fifth degree burn is when there is a loss of organ or there is loss of part. For example, there is an amputation of a particular limb. We say it is fifth degree burn. So far we have correlated between the different layers of skin and the degrees of burns. Now we look at how a patient will clinically present to you in different degrees of burn. So in case of first degree burn, you might see red painful blanches over the skin. In second degree burn, the patient might present to you with a blistered skin. That means in case of a superficial as well as in most deep burns also, patient might present to you with blistered skin. It will be painful which means that the nerve endings are still preserved which is elicited with the help of a positive pinprick test. That means with pinprick pressures, the patient might feel or experience pain which shows that the nerve endings are still preserved. In case of third degree burns, the pinprick test is negative and it is dry and depressed skin. There is non-blanching lesions which means it is a third degree burns where even the nerve endings are completely destroyed. That is third degree burns. Fourth degree burns is again 
burns into your fat muscle tissue bone ligament everything is destroyed so you might, might see a very charred type of an appearance in case of a fourth degree burn fifth degree burn as i have told you there is amputation there is loss of the particular body part or loss of the particular organ that is fifth degree burn now let us come on to the last component of today's topic that is assessment of burns and this is one of the very commonest way in which you assess burns that is the rule of nines method with and this what you see is the valis chart so basically what we are trying to do is calculate the total burned surface area so if the face as well as the head the behind the posterior part along with the neck is burnt we give a score of 9 percentage if the chest is burnt we say it is 9 percentage abdomen is burnt we say again it is 9 percentage of the total body surface area the whole of back is burnt we say it is 18 percentage each leg we give a score of 9 that means 9 anteriorly again 9 posteriorly so each leg is a score of 18 and the perineum we give a score of 1 percentage each hand is a score of 9 that is anterior 4.5 percentage and posterior 4.5 percentage so in total it gives you a score of 100 percentage next in line is palma method this is a very uh, rough method in estimating the total burn surface area where you consider the palm of the affected victim including the fingers as one percentage but calculating burns in this method is very difficult when the patient is critically ill the last method that you use is london broader chart so this chart helps you to calculate or estimate the percentage of burns very accurately and it differs with age so we have given the age that is 0 years 1 5 10 15 and for adults there is differences in the percentage at different places for example a b and c letters indicate the head the thigh and the leg so this is another method how you can calculate the total burn surface area so thank you i hope today's video was helpful for you please let me know your doubts your clarifications and comments in the comment box otherwise have a nice day